Hi everyone, my name is Dave Luza. Walking the halls of Essen Spiel 2018, I spotted a game that looked so beautiful that I just had to know more about it. The game is from a Taiwanese company called Mozzie Games and the game is called Horticulture Master. In Horticulture Master, you are competing to see who has the most beautiful garden at the end of the game. You do this by drafting element cards to be able to buy garden tiles and fill up your garden. The first thing you'll notice is how beautiful everything is. The garden boards, the cards, the little animal standees. In this video, I will first show you how the game works and then I'll tell you what I think of it. On your turn, you can do one of two things. And the first is collecting cards. You do that by looking at the collector area. You look at a card that does not have a cost on it and pick that card up in your hand. Now remember, there is a five card hand limit. So if you would exceed that number, you are not allowed to get more cards. While you are picking your card and there is an identical card adjacent to it, you can pick that up as well. Some cards do have a cost on it, like the Bloom cards. If you want to pick up one or maybe two Bloom cards, you need to pay one Sun card to do that. Magic Mushrooms can be paid for with any element card. And should there be two adjacent, then you need to pay for that second one as well. Magic Mushrooms are wilds during the game, but cannot be used as a Sun while collecting Bloom cards. You can use them to borrow tools from your neighbors as well. More on that later. Because yes, you can develop tool cards. You need to pay the cost that is depicted on them. And then you can put them next to your player board. They do not count towards your hand limit. They give you a perk during the collecting phase and also allow you to buy certain tiles when you are planting. Another option is removing reborn element cards, frost or fire. Again, you can collect one or two of them if two of the same ones are adjacent and you collect them next to your board, they also do not count towards your hand limit. Should you at any point have three of those cards, you can use them as wilds, just like the magic mushrooms, but you cannot use them to borrow tools from your neighbors. And your last option is removing an entire row, refilling the board and choose one of those cards, optionally. You could also choose to not do anything, but you'll be wasting your turn. The other thing you can do is plant a tile from the instruction for gardening tiles. You need to pay for them with the resource cards you've collected before and then place them on your player board. You can rotate them in any direction, but you're not allowed to flip them. If you are the first person to buy from a stack of tiles, then you can collect the little animal standee that is in front of it. That's one point at the end of the game for each animal you've collected. Like I said, some tiles have a requirement of having a certain tool. If you do not have that tool, but one of your neighbors does, then you can give them one of your magic mushroom cards and borrow them. Some tiles will give you a perk during the game, like the gazebo. If you have a gazebo on your board, you can hold on to two tools instead of the regular one. And the chicken coop ups your hand limit to seven. If you want to plant a tile but you do not have enough resources or you do not have enough room on your board, you can transplant a tile. Means you remove it and put it aside in your warehouse, but you'll get a virtual refund of the resources you paid for that tile. And you can use those virtual resources to now build a bigger tile on that same spot. The tiles in your warehouse are worth one point at the end of the game. After doing one of these actions, collecting resource cards or planting tiles, you refill the collector area. Cards slide down on the track following the green arrow and the reborn element cards mix it up a bit. The frost cards don't slide down, they're frozen and fire burns down the tile underneath it. Players alternate turns until one of two things happens. If someone fills up their board, they collect the horticulture master marker three points at the end of the game, or if three of these stack of tiles are empty, then the current round ends and we count up the points and see who has collected the most green finger points. The horticulture master marker is worth three points. Each tile in your garden has different points on them. So you add those up 
Removed garden tiles are worth one point, as well as the animal markers, the magic mushroom markers you have left over, and some of the grass tokens have a bunny on it. Should you have one of those, they are worth one point as well. The player with the most points has won the game. And that's it. That's how you play it. The thing that attracted me to the game is the art. It is really, really great. Just look at it. The art is done by Elsa and Kiko. There is always one single tile that has alternative art on it. There's no need for it, but it's just there, and that's great. That's what gives the game its appeal. The gameplay, however, hmm, I am not a fan. I see what the game wants to do. It wants to combine being efficient, building tiles on your board, have that puzzle element, and combine that with drafting cards. I really like those reborn elements that are mixing up the whole drafting board. But drafting those cards is too much work somehow. It takes too long. You're constantly refilling that collector area. So I really wanted to like the game, but unfortunately I don't. In the beginning of the game, every player is trying to collect resources to buy tools, because if no one has tools, no one has access to those better tiles. So then you've got your tools, so now you're collecting resources to get one of those better tiles. And now you have a better tile with a perk. Hey, now I can hold on to another tool. So you're back to gathering resources for a tool. Oh, it doesn't feel like a game. It, it feels like work. And being allowed to re-transplant those tiles on your board takes away the puzzle element as well. Because it doesn't matter what you put in it. At some point, you want to try to take it all out and put one of those bigger tiles in it that's worth eight points. So my main problem with the game is that it just doesn't flow. And that leaves me sad because just look at it. If you have any questions about the game, just put them in the comments and I'll try to have a look at it and answer them for you. And please let me know as well if you have a different opinion. My name is Dave Luja. Thanks for watching.